everybody. Hello, 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 everybody. We're getting ready to get started here, and uh, we want to welcome you to this uh, first public event of the new New Pulse Historical <laughs> Society. And uh, we're, this is a fundraiser. We're attempting to get ourselves a little working budget so we can get guest speakers. We're going to have we're planning speakers once a month, and we have on May 4th coming up Paul O'Neill doing a history of the Ulster County Courts. On June 1st, Robbie Josephson will be doing a Civil War and Mohunk presentation. July 6th, Susan Stesson Cohen is going to do one on slavery. There will be free events. They will be in here. Uh, we meet on the first Wednesday of the month, and you're all invited to, t to attend. We're also looking for members. Uh, membership will be $10 a year, which will get you on the mailing list. You'll be able to be part of the group and, you know, vote on events and things people we want to have, that sort of thing. Um, so for tonight's event, this is the f our first event, and it's a uh, antiques roadshow style event. We have a series of, uh, a group of experts here. I will introduce my cards here. In this envelope I have Walter Marquez. Walter's the manager of the Water Street Market and Antiques Barn, and he's an antiques expert. He teaches classics and antiques and in collectibles and everybody tells me he knows everything. <laughs> uh, and then I have here Sanford Levy. 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 Sanford Levy of Jenkinstown Antiques. And he specializes in, in furniture, art, stoneware, and china. Okay? And Susan has. Um, I have Lionel Heyman. And Lionel's expertise is tools. What else would you say besides That's tools? <laughs> <laughs> so if you have tools, he's the guy. Um, we have <laughs> and just to let you know, all of these people, um, including Dolly in the back, came out as volunteers to do this for us. So I think that's pretty wonderful. <laughs> and as Jack said, this is our first event, so it's really exciting. Um, planning for months. So again, every month we hopefully will have something. Um, we have Mark Stolfi, am I pronouncing it right? Who's an auctioneer, an antiques expert, antiques dealer at Water Street Market at the barn. Right. Did I miss anything? Yeah, Dolly. No, no. I oh. <laughs> and last, Dolly, can you stand up? <laughs> There's Dolly quilt history, so hopefully someone will have a quilt here. So um, what we would like to do is we're going to turn it over to Walter, um, and I guess he'll start. Okay. Any we other questions? One other thing, we want to welcome Bob Fagan from uh, Public Access TV yes. 23, correct? And this, uh, the video that he's doing will be available on YouTube, okay? And if anyone doesn't want their name or face um, in this video, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, just tell Bob, okay? I'm gonna put this. He can make here. those dancing pixels blood. on your face. <laughs> okay, great. Walter, okay. take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, I recognize a lot of you. Um, we're gonna do the best we can here. Um, this is our first time as our group doing this, so we're kind of winging it a little bit. I think they gave you all numbers. A bunch of you. Um, I think you're number one. Yes, now she's up to six. I'm just going to start handing it to some of the people here who might have a better. <laughs> and then we're going to talk about them and let you know what we think they are. And I just think it's 19th century. French, 19th century. I'll try to talk as loud as I can. <laughs> this is a 20th century uh, reproduction of an earlier piece. It's Italian and probably hard to get $25 to $50 for it. Well, I <laughs> can't judge what you paid for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a beautiful doll. You know, it's a hand painted face, um, but it's a reproduction of an antique French or German doll. It is not old at all. Um, it's purely decorative in value. 
If we were selling this in our store, if this didn't say Highland, it'd be like a $10 or $15 tin. Because it says Highland and it's local to our area, this could be a $35 to $45 tin just because that name. If we took this to New Jersey or Pennsylvania, it'd be like, eh, $10 again. And then Lionel has a another Highland piece. Ice pick. An ice pick from Highland, and it has a three-digit phone number, you know, phone 103, so you can figure like the 20s, the early 20s, and uh, it's nice. It, it would be like around $10, $15, just because it's Highland. Again, if it were just a ordinary run-of-the-mill uh, ice pick, it would be, you know, $5 or so. I get to pick up everything here. Uh, uh, this is uh, not an antique either. Uh, it's a reproduction. It's probably something imported uh, from Southeast Asia and uh, probably uh, 20 years old at best. Um, I wouldn't be able to put a value on it. This is kind of interesting. It's a little puzzling to me and everyone here. It's, it's, a, it's a print. It says Courier Knives. And it's a black subject matter, an African, uh, Ameri black Americana, I guess they would say. Uh, the crowd that scooped the pools. The crowd that scooped the pools, is that what it says? Yeah. Um, wait, honestly, to do a real fair appraisal on this, you need to take this out of here and see the paper that it's on. Courier Knives never made a folio this size, no. as far as I know. They made this size, they made a large folio. Never have I ever seen one so small. The subject matter is wonderful. I need to see the paper on this to see if, for, if it is a 19th century print. Uh, I can't tell from here without seeing the back of the print. Subject matter is really wonderful. It's a great subject. Just as a print, um, without seeing it, I would say it's probably worth 60 to 80 dollars. It could be much more, could be better. Uh, I don't think it's much work. Now keep in mind everyone, I'm sure you've all seen the Antiques Roadshow on TV. They don't do it how we're doing it. They've seen the stuff, when you see them on television, remember it's a TV program, they're there to entertain you. So they've already done all this for hours behind the scenes. They have a staff of 10 or 20 people on computers looking all this stuff up. So when you see them on television, that's not the first time they're seeing that item. Unfortunately here, this is the first time we're seeing it. So it does take a little longer than just a while for doing what we can. So we're working as fast as we can up here. We have a very heavy set of blocks. They're like uh, stone or cement or something. There's a lot of writing on here. Um, anchor blocks of stone in three colors. Stone building boxes. 1900 patent date. Um, the name of the manufacturer is on here. It's in another language, even. German. 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 Thank you. I took Spanish. I don't know. <laughs> so it looks like it's a pretty complete set. It's very heavy. I don't imagine kids sitting around playing with this too much. Um, you can imagine if they did play with it a lot, we probably wouldn't see all these pieces left either. The box wouldn't be in the condition it's in. This would be about $250. Here we have a child's book, Alice's Adventure in Wonderland. Unfortunately, with kids' books, what happens is the condition is always kind of poor. And you can see this one's in rough shape. The cover is hanging on by a few threads now. Um, we tend to see quite a bit of this. You know, it's good subject matter because everybody knows Alice in Wonderland. Um, if it were five or ten dollars retail, that would be on a good day. Written by Bile and Brett, and we were discussing whether it was a, a freebie poster that was like available in a record. It would be a '78 record. So uh, you, can see, you can see some folds in it, and it looks like it might have been a giveaway at that point. But it's done. The artist was Ben Sean. He died in New York in 1969. His paintings bring 20, 30, 40,000. Uh, print like this, 
probably you know 500 to 800 that kind of value but it is valuable and uh, if, it, uh, if it's yours you want to make sure that there's some acid free paper behind it okay <laughs> this is the history of the Civil War illustrated with reproductions of photographs by Brady who was a very important Civil War photographer this is a more of a commemorative type series that was book that was divided into it appears to be 15 separate individual sections and it's quite nice it's quite interesting it appears to be complete there's some color prints in the front there's lots of black and whites you know the uh, the best of the photographer of the Civil War era of course was Matthew Brady and this man here is also important in American history books uh, of, of, of publishing history books Lossing right Sandy Lossing did um, I'm just looking for a date probably in Roman numeral obviously it was done post Civil War you know because there were many of them made uh, and it has the uh, bound cover which is nice mm -hmm. this is the uh, color and as you go through each one is full of reproductions of the photographs that Matthew Brady did it's a nice thing probably put out around the turn of the century 1900 if I took some more time and had more time I'd find out a little bit more about when it was published. My guess is, you know, 10 or 20 years later than the Civil War. But very nice, good condition. Uh, it's all complete. Um, unfortunately, many of these got broken up and were framed. You know, they, so it's good to see a complete set because lots of times people would break them up, sell one, take a beautiful photograph out or a beautiful print, and then uh, frame it. But being you have the whole set, I would say it would probably be worth retail, a neighborhood of four to six hundred. Uh, these people here have two wonderful pieces of silver, and luckily for us, they brought the. Uh, you want to hold this for me? Thank you. Uh, a receipt from 1945. Someone else bought this, and you inherited it. Uh, what? Grandparents. They made a smart purchase. Uh, this was made in Edinburgh. Uh, it's dated 1747 was sold by James Robinson and Company. They're still in business. This piece was made in 1747 in Edinburgh. And uh, when the original uh, purchaser paid $750 for it, back then that was a lot of money. I would venture to say that uh, this pot, albeit that it needs a cleaning, uh, is probably worth about 2800 right now. Maybe a little more. Uh, it, it's really quite wonderful. It's in excellent condition. It's uh, got little bone inserts here uh, by the handle. I'm not and sure how or if I should clean it so I just left it the way it was. Yeah, that's fair. Right? Yeah. It's, it's not, nothing's going to eat it. But if you have a good piece of silver like this, it should be cleaned once in a while. Mm -hmm. Because eventually it does pit. Yeah. So uh, a nice soft paste. Mm -hmm. A metal box for razors, Gillette, and the latest patent date on it is, is uh, 1908, which means it's any time between 1908 and 1926, <laughs> because after 18 years, patents are over, and they wouldn't bother putting it down. And uh, there's a couple of Gillette razor blades in it, and too bad it doesn't have the razors with it, you know, for a safety razor. It has a bit of a dent here, and it's uh, brass with, uh, I guess, silver plate. I would guess it's silver plate over brass. And uh, unfortunately, it, it has a value of oops, maybe $10, $15. Yeah. And again, it's too bad you don't have the razor with it because then it would be worth a lot more. Um, this is a cloisonne vase. Cloisonne was made by the Japanese and also the Chinese. This is a Japanese cloisonne vase. Happens to have the original little paperwork with it. The Naba Cloisonne Company. 
This piece of cloisonne is really fine quality. The finer the quality of the Japanese cloisonne, the better it is. The really fine Japanese cloisonne was signed on the bottom, and the That's silver, the, the back, <coughs> the backing that it was actually set on, was silver. This is not silver. Let me explain cloisonne. I should start at the beginning. Cloisonne is an enamel process that was set into this and divided in all by hand with little wires. If you looked really close at this, you'd see little wires separating all the colors. And what makes this one even a little bit better, if you look in the background of it, it's also Thank you. decorated in this, in a uh, carved relief of fish that's swimming around it. And then they put that green over, and then they did the flowers. I mean, it's a lot of work, really. And cloisonne, some cloisonne, could be worth hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of dollars if you have the right piece. This is a good piece, but not of that quality and not of that age. This dates probably from around the 1920s and 1930s, I would say. But still, what also makes cloisonne important, or what is, as opposed to unimportant, or less value, I should say, is the condition of it. And this is an excellent condition. There's no chips, there's no cracks. Lots of times you'll see damage, they'll drop it, <laughs> and they'll put, put a, a dent in it and then it's worthless but this is excellent and it's a beauty it's a beautiful piece uh, retail a person that collects cloisonne would love to have this and I'd be ventured I would be willing to say it's worth between three and five hundred real pretty piece I like this this is a just a carving of a man to me it has like an ash can uh, which was a period of art, um, was in the 30s and 40s. A lot of famous artists came out of that school of art. To me, it looks like this could be from, that, from a painting of that era. So I would date this, and it's signed by the artist, but we had no luck finding anything on him, right, Sandy? Looks like O.W. Davis, D-A-V-I-S, which is nice in itself. Do you know? It's, very... it's 1933, it's made as a okay. wedding gift for my... So I was right, yes? Yeah. So. <laughs> um, but I like it. I like it a lot. It's, yeah. It has a real good look. It's just a guy standing on a corner with his hands in his pocket. You know, the subject matter is just wonderful. It's American. It's oak. It's uh, just a great carving, you know. And if the artist we could ever find anything about, that would add a lot to it. Um, I, you know, in this quick research, in the quick time frame we have here, this would require more research. But let's just say, for instance, it wasn't signed, just as a beautiful sculpture from that period, being American and being a great subject, I would still say it's worth in the neighborhood of four to six hundred. And if the artist is somebody, it would be better and more. But I love it. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. It's, you know, it's a little bit on the contemporary side because of the color of the canvas and the stretcher. Well, at first glance you say, oh, it's really nothing special, but the more you look at it, the more I like it. It's a Western illustration, you know, probably done in the 50s. You know, it's stapled on, it could be commercialish, but some of the really good American Western artists started like that. They started painting and gained notoriety. I mean, it's really wonderfully done. If they're in a dust storm, you know, it needs some cleaning, it needs. This is just a little spider vest on there. It is, a, you know, but it's cool. And I can't make out the name on this either. Sandy, and I, either one of us could make it out. That's worth, I don't know whose it is, but, uh, you know, I've worked with painting. Sometimes it takes a week or more to figure out the name. But I, but we both it's like certainly it. worth uh, yeah. looking into because we Western like stuff has a good value. And it has that illustration you look, you know, like right. it could have been from a book or a cover of a magazine or something. It's just is really cool. And without knowing a lot about it, I still think it's worth several hundred dollars. Well, illustration by Thomas Hart Benton. Uh, it's, a, it's a modern frame deal here. Uh, it is Thomas Benton though. And um, it, it seems to be original. They're etchings. Uh, it seems to be correct. Uh, I would also like to take it out of its frame. To make sure of that, but you agree that it's a uh, Benton? Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, lithograph. You see any date there? No, but it appears to be pencil signed, yeah. which is pencil good. Pencil signed. But right. you're right. You do need to see the back yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to. It's a modern frame job, 
uh, if it was mine or I was in charge of selling it, I would want to open it up and make sure that it's, uh, the borders are not cut or anything like that. But e just the way it is, it's worth probably at least $500, but it could be worth several thousand. It, I don't know who owns it, but I would open it up and... Uh, etching. This is a Renoir etching. And you say, oh my God, a Renoir etching. I mean, again, this needs to be opened and you look at the paper. But what I like about it, it's beautifully matted, beautifully framed. So to me, right away, I say, well, it's a rather early Renoir etching. Renoir etchings, uh, this subject matter, I've seen it. I, I just don't know the name of it off the top of my head. Girl with bonnet or girls with bonnet, something like that. Um, but it's a wonderful little etching. And what makes the value of these being... 600 or 6,000 is the when they were done the time frame the the addition of these when they were actually done done meaning uh, when they were pressed when they were when the etching was pressed because they use the same plate <coughs> to press this onto a paper when they were originally done in the late 1800s all the way until 1950 the pressings were the same. What changed is detail in these, in the lines, and they call that different states of an etching or an engraving. Some of the real famous etchers like Charles Marion and Rembrandt, they tell by what lines are missing because as time goes on, the plates need to be reworked. When you first print them, there's more detail, and then as time goes on, the plate becomes worn, so it becomes less and less detail, and that's generally how you tell. What is nice about this is that this appears to be at least from the, you know, 1920s, 1910, 1920s, framed at that time, which is good, so that means it could be late, 1800, late 1890, 1900, which would be real good, which would be real good. So back in the day, they used to put things in nice boxes instead of cardboard boxes. This was for um, Graham wafer biscuits. We open it up, it's also on the inside. Probably like 1910, 1920 era. Um, these aren't too rare really, believe it or not. Even though this is all paper on the wood, people tend to save these and they take good care of them for some reason. So we see a lot of these. This one's Albany, down here. There's a lot of these from Poughkeepsie. They're usually bigger. Um, but they're very sellable. This one, probably about 65 to $85 because of the condition. If this were gone, then it's like half that. This, yeah, this is a wonderful ivory handled riding crop. The head is of a horse, it's ivory. This is silver, I don't see any marks on it, but 100% sure it's silver because they wouldn't mix ivory with anything but silver. The stick itself is in need of uh, restoration or maybe a new one put on it. You know, take this off, put it on an, something similar. Uh, the end has been damaged and repaired. They, it was broken here and they fixed it with a piece of copper tube pipe, like uh, a plumber did that, but no. <laughs> but it, it's very nice. Even the silver is decorated in equestrian motif. The horse is wonderful. It had glass eyes at one time. They're no longer there. So it needs some restoration, but it's a great, great um, carved ivory riding crop. And there's a lot of interest in canes and things of this sort. It could be a cane. Someone would actually take this right off here, mount this on a nice vintage same time frame cane, and you've got something worth, oh, 1000 to 1500 That's a beauty. The, the one problem you have to watch out for, if you notice on the road show, whenever they do an ivory piece, there's a little blurb at the bottom about looking to the laws about selling ivory. This is a um, girl softball program. program from 1939. The weird thing is, there is a signature on it. It happens to be Joe DiMaggio, though. 
<laughs> Why? Who knows? Um, the graphics alone on this are really cool. If this didn't have a signature on it, you know, this could be a twenty to thirty dollar program just because of this front. And people do this; they frame them, hang them on their walls, and they look kind of cool. The problem with signatures, you have to be very careful. If we don't know, like if you know who had this and had him sign it. Okay, her mother played softball and she had it signed by him. Unfortunately, that's all well and good. If she were here in the room, maybe we could prove that. You would still have to have that signature authenticated. So this could be a fake. It could be people had people sign their name for them. Um, they stamp things. This doesn't look like a stamp. So we could, you'd have to find a person who just does autographs to authenticate that. On the road show, they probably have 20 people that do that. We don't have 20 people that do that. Um, to me, it looks real, but I'm not a signature person. So this could be, you look up history of what his signature has sold for. I'm sure it's a decent amount of money, hundreds, I'm sure, easily. But again, without authenticating that, I couldn't say that for sure. Wouldn't be. We have an interesting item up here. Uh, we'll let this guy tell you about it. Uh, this is my father, who um, was a Navy captain in World War II. He was in intelligence. He went to Aachen, Germany, following frontline troops. And when they went into Aachen, he found this uh, music box and uh, liberated it and brought it home. And it still works. And it uses uh, holes in this to go, go across it. It's all cranked. But uh, I have a lot of fond memories of playing with it when I was a kid. Wonderful music box, probably dates from about 1910, uh, maybe, maybe a few years earlier than that. Uh, these were very popular. Uh, they were made mostly in Germany. Uh, there's a lot of them still around, uh, but it, it seems to be in really good condition. There's a lot of these around that don't play at all. Uh, so it's kind of like a clock mechanism. A clock repair person could get this spiffy and clean and it would fire along real well. He's got the whole case here. So we, even in this uncleaned condition, considering that it has this stack of records, uh, I would think this would be worth somewhere about uh, 1500 uh, It's really quite a nice music box. And uh, they have a big following. These things. There are this probably dates. Uh, late Victorian, 1890s or so. It's very beautifully painted, and it's uh, undisturbed, which is really nice. I like to see things like this in original condition. Um, stripped down, I don't think you can get $20 for this, but in this condition with the old paint, I would say it's probably worth uh, 400 or so, 350 four and a quarter, because uh, of the uh, original condition on it. We started our New Pulse Historical Society about six, or eight, six to eight months ago. So this was our first event to bring local people together, to bring local appraisers together, um, to do some fundraising so that we could um, have like seed money so we can start the group. New Pulse is one of the only towns that didn't have a historical society. We had Huguenot Street, but they studied the Huguenots. So um, I've been involved in local history for about 15, 20 years and have been trying to do this and just thought I'd try it and got a lot of people that were really excited together. And so we started. We have a whole series now of um, every month we're going to have somebody coming in, like next month, Paul O'Neill, speaking about the, um, the history of the Houston Courthouse. And then um, the following month, Robbie Joseph's coming in, Robbie Josephson speaking about the Civil War. Then I'm coming in and talking about, um, I'm co-authoring a book on runaway slaves in the Hudson Valley with Ashley Biagini, and that will, we'll be talking about that in July. So we're gonna have a lineup every month.